first fly I want to tie is the cap spider. For those of you that have never seen the cap spider or never fished with one, if you don't <clears throat> learn any other fly to tie, this right here will cover your brim fishing in the state of Texas. And I have yet, I've won three world championships fishing with this fly, and I have yet to find anything that will compare to it. I thought I originated this fly. I was fishing the Austin perch off, and I, I used to like to fish with the rubber spider, you know, sponge spider. They were sponge back when the Gatton Gaddis fished with them. Now, now that we use foam rubber, you know, we don't have real sponge. But uh, Anyway, I said, well, you know, there's only one thing on the earth that could outfish a rubber spider, and that would be a sinking rubber spider. So. The guys the year before used these little jigs and they were be doing real well with them. And I said, man, I need a sinking rubber spider based on that jig. So I came up with this fly. <clears throat> it's called the cap spider for a reason. I didn't name it. I just thought that I'd originated it because I hadn't seen it or copied it from anybody. But we used to have this thing called the pre-perch in the Austin Angler right before the perch off started. And that's where everybody got in there and sat right around the table and psyched everybody out and all that kind of stuff. And I told Billy Tremble, I said, well, I got the fly that's going to whoop everybody this year, and I showed him one of these things. He says, oh, yeah, a cap spider. I said, what do you mean a cap spider? I came up with this late last night. This was 1981. And he says, well, you'll probably see here right directly well, about an hour later, this guy came in and he had about 200 of them stuck in his ball cap. <laughs> so, you know, don't get too excited if you originate a fly and somebody comes in with one just like it, because if the fly only has two parts, which this one does, then quite frankly, there's a good chance that somebody's going to come in with one identical to it. What I use is ultra chenille or vernil. This is vernil. If you buy the ultra chenille that Orbis carries now, what they've done is repackaged the vernil so it's a real high quality. The difference is that you have a harder core and not too much blade on it. And I do a lot of woven flies and I keep the scraps from my woven flies because I can tie my cap spiders with just about that amount. So I save all the scraps from all my woven flies to do this. But just start Start your vernil on, on the, actually that's the bottom of the hood, about an eighth of an inch back from the head. Wrap back the shank of the hook. Right to the end, right over the barb, and wrap back again. And just take this body, you can glue it if you want, but with that many wraps on it, it ain't coming loose. And just wrap it real close, just wrap your body here. What size jig look at that one? That's actually a size, it's a one one hundred and twenty-fourth ounce jig, and you can buy them in, in these in packages. I found the one hundred and twenty-fourth ounce to be the best size. I fish with a two-weight and a three-weight <clears> mostly. And, uh, and it just, the sink rate, seems to be a little more effective. I've tried using the 80th before, and, and they're just a little heavy and they sink a little too fast for the fly to be really effective. So the 124th ounce is what I suggest that you use. Okay, so we've wrapped that body. Turn it over in your visor. If you've got a rotary vise, turn your rotary vise upside down. And uh, I usually, for the legs, I use the silly legs, just the, the, the black and white or black and silver, something similar to that. And you just need one strand. Take one strand of the silly legs, fold it in half. Clip it 
and fold it in half a second time and cut it. And that's just about the perfect length. Now you got four strands of rubber which will make eight legs. Hence it'll actually be a spider. Did I move out of the range? No, you're fine. I'll follow you. I'm all right. And you just come over here and figure eight those legs. A little suggestion when you're working that'll make your life easier when you're working with rubber, don't put any tension at all on the first wrap. Just get the X on there and that way you can stretch the rubber a little bit, pull up, and that'll be centered. That'll center it for you. And then you won't wind up with five legs on one side and three on the other. Did you stack okay. those on top of each other? But Did you stack the rubber? rubber? Mm -hmm. I just grabbed the clump. Okay. Um, on my second figure eight, I'll hold one side and pull some tension down, come over and hold on the other side. And I'll usually make about three wraps. You don't need much, many wraps because it sinks into that rubber, so it's not going to slip. I have never in my life had silly legs come out looking like that. <laughs> okay, and just make now a few wraps in front uh -huh. of it. Now you know what? Because <laughs> I wasn't doing it right. Yeah. Boom, tied on the first wrap. You don't put any tension at all. I don't put any tension at all on the first X. Just the weight of the bottom. Silly leg come out uniform. And, like and, that. and that's just going to make life easier for you because if you put tension on the first wrap over, and them legs are going everywhere. You can't find one side from the other. And uh, you'll, you'll wind up with five legs on one side and three on the other is what will happen. Where we'll do just you get those hooks, Mike? Sir? Where do you get the hooks? I get them, uh, I, well, the current batch I got at uh, Blue Ribbon when I was up at the Conclave, but uh, uh, you can buy a Bass Pro Shop, they carry it. Yeah, Cabela's got a catalog. Yeah, Cabela's. Cabela's, Cabela's James James the yeah. Stuff that you and that's all there is to it. If your legs were a little off, you can even them up or whatever. But, but that's the fly. That's all there is to it. That's it. And I tie this fly usually in four colors. I'll tie it. The most effective by far is the olive followed very closely by the black. And then, you, then chartreuse and then brown. And you use that same color silly leg with an olive or brown? I use the same color silly leg for all of I haven't found that the color of the legs makes any difference. Let her sink. Let her sink and, and instead of stripping, if you'll just swim the fly real slow, just like that. And I found that to be true when fishing for sunfish. I found that to be true with most, most fly patterns for brim. And when you're fishing for bass, it's totally different. When you're fishing for brim, if you'll learn to swim that fly, and then you can just kind of feel it, just as the, you, you, or you can watch the line just kind of sort of tighten up without, without him being hooked and know when to set your hook. But uh, with most sinking flies, if you'll swim it instead of stripping it, you're gonna catch a lot more sunfish. What, what?